Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Thanks uh, for uh, hosting this event. Um, we are uh, election observers. So, what, what are election observers doing? Uh, we, we travel to normally to countries like Nigeria, Zimbabwe. Uh, a colleague of mine is now in Tunisia, others like Myanmar. So, we, we observe elections out there, but we, then in 2013 we realized okay, what's, what's the state of the elections like in Austria? What's the state of elections like in Europe? So that's why we started this NGO, Wahlbeobachtung.org. Uh, you know, we are uh, also a Verein, uh, and most recently we have uh, had some small projects for the European elections. We had a panel discussion uh, with top candidates with five different schools, students, first-time voters. Uh, another project was uh, an election assessment mission uh, to the European Parliament elections covering all 28 member states. I will come back to that at the end of the presentation. So we also have a website which is in English and also in German and you will see there also our recommendations for reforms in Austria but now also for the European Parliament. Uh, to, to start with, I wanted to show you a graph uh, from the trust in social networks and what's surprising about it is how highly ranked Austria is up there on the table in trusting uh, social networks and social media. Yeah, so in comparison with our big neighbor Germany, we have uh, 30 points of tending to trust, while Germany has 14 points. And if we look at uh, the difference from 2017 to 2018, there's an increase in trust in Austria, well, of one point, and the decline of trust uh, in, of two points in Germany. So that shows somehow uh, what's the state of affairs in Austria. Uh, and you see Austria is among those so-called uh, established democracies of Western Europe is very high up there, while the other countries are probably further uh, around the line of, of the average EU 28. Now, uh, we decided that social media is something which is becoming increasingly important for the electoral campaign. We saw that in countries outside of Europe, but we also saw that during the European Parliament uh, elections. Uh, we thought we, we want and we want to see what is happening in Austria uh, for the early parliamentary elections this year. You know, Austria is now a bit of a, has an election inflation. We had six elections uh, at the national level in three years, so we are a bit exhausted already and in an overdrive after the 2016 year with three elections for the presidential uh, for the for the president. And we've we've come up with a new project because it is so uh, high on the agenda also at the European level. So we have colleagues from Democracy Reporting International in Berlin and uh, Memo 98 in Slovakia. Uh, so we're in contact with them, they have developed uh, observation uh, methodology, they have collected best practice from Europe, from outside of Europe, what to do with the campaign on social media uh, during elections. Yeah? So you, you're all aware of it, you know, the campaign uh, ahead of an election has shifted from the public space to the private space, it has shifted from uh, one political debate at the national level to several uh, political deb debates also into so-called silos and it's private companies like Facebook and Google and Twitter are more and more becoming gatekeepers of the electoral campaign and as we heard uh, before uh, by Scott, you know, most of the money, or a lot of money is now flowing into the online campaign. Yeah, and for us it was important to understand, okay, who is who is monitoring that, uh, what data is available, who uh, is aware about what is happening there, or is anyone aware about what is happening there, and uh, what is the uh, possibilities to learn more about uh, the online campaign of political parties and politicians uh, during an electoral uh, campaign. Yeah, so that's where we try to find partners because we are political scientists, my colleagues uh, who are now in, in Tunisia and in, in Myanmar, we are anthropologists, you know, and we don't have the data knowledge and that's where we asked around and 
through friends of friends, we found the, uh, the data for good and the DNA data science group and they were uh, uh, super helpful and, and without them we would not be anywhere close to where we are now. Uh, and so it's a, a lot of learning as well for us and so we tried to get this authority from Facebook and Twitter and Rani will talk more about that. So we thought we wanted to only focus on the three weeks ahead of an election covering also the day after the election and we mainly focused on the question of the traffic and the topics of the campaign and also see how this ad library is working and to which extent it's helpful. You know, needless to say that this all is something which is not necessarily um, easy to access. Yeah? So the ad library is easy to access but it's not, it's not um, very precise. Um, we also wanted to uh, reach out to other continents, so we found partners in Brazil uh, from the from the uh, uh, Getulio Vargas Foundation, uh, and they have specialized especially on, on YouTube and WhatsApp. So they helped us also to analyze YouTube videos of uh, with political content and ahead of the elections. So we, we uh, received on a weekly basis the top 25 videos, campaign videos on YouTube. Now I, I would like to show you some of the uh, data and graphs which we have uh, analyzed already and you know, we are now in the process of digesting the data further and come up with a final report including recommendations which will be published next month in English, also with an executive summary in German, in cooperation with Democracy Reporting International. And you know, this is a first um, graph, uh, which is also now online, I understand, on the for Data for Good website. And you know, this shows that uh, in comparison, first, uh, it seems that Twitter is, is more used, and especially more used by uh, the Greens and the Neos party uh, and it's, it shows uh, aggregated data for all the political party and all the candidates together and you see it's about 3,000 uh, tweets by the Greens and some 2,200 by Neos while other political parties are rather um, yeah, reluctant to use Twitter to that extent except uh, Getz uh, which is quite prominent there uh, when it comes to Facebook, you see there's a, quite a level playing field among uh, Freedom Party, NEOS, uh, ÖVP and SPÖ and a bit, you know, the Greens are lagging behind there in, 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 in Facebook. Uh, the picture looks different if you include then the interactions to the posts and you see that now on the daily basis and, um, which includes posts and interactions. The, here you see already that the Freedom Party is uh, probably far more active and generating far more traffic than any other party on Facebook, while uh, on, on Twitter is similar like before, that we uh, have uh, uh, a lot of uh, activity from the Green Party and the Neos Party and their supporters. When it comes to the Facebook advertising budgets, yeah, and that's from the Ad Library, we see uh, diversity because we have on the one hand the Green Party which is more focused on campaigning as a party while the other parties are more campaigning for their candidates and especially their top candidates. So you see on uh, the upper uh, graph you see the Greens in the lead that, you know, they put all uh, the, the money basically as on the party um, advertisement and below you see and it's going up to 105,000 about uh, of your spend and then on, on the bottom graph you see the spending of the Freedom Party goes beyond uh, some 170,000 euros here uh, followed by the uh, Social Democrats uh, the, the FLP and the NEOS so I think it, it shows very well uh, this is a different focus of campaign on, on Facebook. 
Now, uh, this is interesting for us, and we discussed it a lot before we started the whole project. Is it possible to see whether uh, online advertisement uh, makes a difference? Yeah? Is it possible to see whether uh, there's value for money for the parties to campaign on Facebook? And here we see with the dotted line, we see the uh, ads which are uh, sponsored, while the, the other lines, the full lines, are the ones which are not sponsored. Yeah. Uh, so you see on the uh, upper uh, scale up, you see the number of, of interactions and uh, especially those which have been promoted and sponsored are picking up and, and are generating a lot of interactions. Yeah. So it's, it, it shows um, that you know, money in social media pays off, you know, that's not surprising, but that there is a real uh, uh, acceleration of the posts uh, at, at, uh, at, at, at some stages. And here, again, this is now the overall uh, average number of interactions per post, not promoted and promoted. So on the left you have the, promote, the not promoted, and on the right you have the promoted ones. So you, you see very well that uh, probably the Freedom Party did rather well in uh, using its money on the, ad, on the ads on Facebook. So they accelerated really uh, their reach on, on Facebook with the, with the paid ads, while others are less successful in, in uh, using their money on, on Facebook. So it's, it's 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 the overall um, the overall number of uh, interactions and the overall uh, money spent. And here we go now to the YouTube. We see uh, on YouTube there's one party dominant, and that's uh, the Freedom Party. You probably all have seen uh, the uh, campaign ads which they have. Uh, Produced rather professionally and more than a, as, a, as, a, as a more like an infotainment or entertainment than a campaign a, 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 a traditional campaign spot. So they reached uh, over over three million views, followed by the nails which are below uh, half a million. So this is this is um, yeah uh, really surprising to us yeah because we thought uh, there would be more balance. Uh, YouTube coverage, but uh, social uh, democrats or people's party are not present or almost not present at all. And as I said, yet uh, is not uh, in there uh, because uh, it never reached the top 25 uh, spots of the week. So that's why we did not include. But it, it's uh, it's really uh, amazing to see these um, professionally well done spots of the Freedom Park, which reached uh, one reached over 1 million views, the other one uh, almost 800,000 views. So these are directly you know, communicated campaign messages of one party and you can really measure how many people clicked on it. It's not that uh, you, 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 these people were not were passively looking at it. Um, this is issues uh, basically the, the role of, or the, the shifting role of uh, the traditional media or media who are, or which are present on YouTube. Yeah? So ORF is not allowed to be present on YouTube, so you basically see only Willkommen Österreich and uh, uh, Good Night Österreich, and I think Maschek maybe uh, is, is still in the ORF, but Ö24 uh, is rather successful. Uh, with all the content they generate there. Uh, just two more graphs about the interactions on YouTube. So again, uh, and that's maybe the, the, the good difference to see, the overall interactions, the Freedom Party is ahead with over 30,000 interactions in total, followed by the Greens, but when it comes then on the interactions per post, you see that the Greens are more successful uh, when it comes to their probably three posts which they uh, 
uh, which they uh, advertised on, on YouTube. Now, just to conclude, I would like to uh, go back to what I said at the beginning, to the EU election assessment mission which we conducted. We delivered a report just last uh, month. Uh, this mission was taking place with 65 uh, experts and colleagues of ours who worked on a pro bono basis throughout Europe on, on this uh, assessment focusing on four different areas. One area was the social media regulation. So we uh, thought this is a very hot topic and we came up with the findings that really uh, the particular right-wing populist movements, movements and parties have been successful in mastering and using social media campaigns. Yeah? So this is really uh, uh, something for politicians and, and and bureaucrats in Brussels had a big fear about ahead of the elections that these right-wing, uh, you know, populist parties use social media to to gain a bigger part of the of the share in the European Parliament. It was not that bad as everybody thought beforehand, but it, it really um, and you know a lot, a lot of parties entered uh, the governments or gained substantive uh, popular support. We also so look into the different legislation which have been implemented by national parties and it was already mentioned that there is this uh, code of practice which is self-regulatory for the Facebook, Google, Twitter, uh, etc. Et uh, and to which extent this has worked or not worked. There are very good reports by the Commission on the progress of it they are currently in the in the in the process of negotiating what comes after. So the DG Connect or DG, um, uh, the commissioner responsible for it, is probably key in defining the legal framework for the future, and that's for sure a big a big uh, topic for the next commission. Um, some countries like France and Germany, they have introduced more specific legislation. Now, we came up with two specific recommendations, which we uh, also would like to promote further in Austria, and we will also include in an in a, in a altered form in the Austrian report, because we think it's uh, key to ensuring uh, and promoting a level playing field in the campaign. So that's, that's really, fundamental and based on the human rights uh, and, and, and uh, standards uh, our constitution is based and our international legal framework is based. So we need transparency in the campaigns and we need the protection of the privacy and for this we, we, we need clear regulations, coherent implementation and, and independent oversight. So the question is, okay, who is providing this independent oversight? Is it, is it the, the state? Is it uh, some authority, independent authority, or is it civil society, or is it a mix of that? Yeah, and we say uh, we would uh, think that there should be also a watchdog role from civil society to ensure that there is uh, a, a, a fair game. Um, the other part is, and probably Randy is going more into that, uh, is, is to provide meaningful access to data to election observers and researchers. Yeah? So we don't want to be the beggars asking, okay, could we access that data and can we observe what is happening online? You know, this needs to be guaranteed and there needs to be a, a clear provision that this uh, space where election campaign is happening needs to be open and transparent to those who want to uh, review it and, and uh, conduct an oversight. I keep it with that and I'm looking forward to a lively campaign.